Hello everyone, today we're going to do a small demo on infrastructure as code. A lot of people have asked me from, okay, DevOps, what is it, what can it mean to me, especially a lot of IT pro people. So today, a small demo, we have three environments, development, test and production, and we're going to do some network changes upon those. What do we have up our sleeve for today? So basically, we're going to use Azure, we're going to use RM templates. We're looking towards our environments. Here we can see this is my development subnet, it's the 40, and it has five payload subnets. Those are two default ones from our reference design. The same goes for our test environment, same thing where we had 40, here it's the 30, and for production the 10, and this is our production network, so we're going to do some changes upon that one. We've created this environment via the ARM template, for those who are unfamiliar with it, there are a given set of parameters you can input, the variables resources and what are we going to do we're going to create a virtual network going to create also going to create several subnets and we're going to loop over those how are we going to trigger those we have several parameters the name the location the prefix dns parameters the amount of subnets we're going to deploy and a given subnet mask as we have three environments, we have the development environment with its own parameters, the test environment with its own parameters, and the production environment. As some of you have noticed, there is an additional file with the dot tests, and this is a pester file, a pester test file. Pester is used for unit testing, and we're going to apply some unit testing on this environment. We're going to check if there is a JSON file, if there are the three parameter files, the metadata file, if all the properties as expected are there, same for the resources, so the virtual networks and subnets, and a given set of parameters. So we did a bit of a smoke test and to see if everything's okay. And next up we're going to do a test deployment towards Azure for the given for the various parameter files. So okay, we have our code. What we're going to do now, there is a concept called continuous integration and continuous deployment. Continuous integration, every time we change the code, we're going to trigger a build. So once we add it, we're going to look at our build environment and we look towards the triggers. Here we see continuous integration, so a build each time a check-in is done. We can do some filters, but we're not going to do those. What are we going to do? We're going to invoke pester, so we're going to do the unit tests. We're going to publish those test results, archive, so copy the files into a zip file, everything, so all the template files, and we're going to create an artifact. An artifact, this, the creation of such, is a thing we can take towards the release, is going to be the trigger for a release, but we'll come back to that later on. So. Once we go to the summary of a build, we can see that there are, have been several builds. It's going to note here. So, and we're going to check the last one. And once there, we're going to see that there is a log file of each step there. So the build succeeded. If we're going to check for the step on the invoke pester, where we did some unit testing. going to see okay everything we just said the template validation was done and the test deployments were okay all steps went well so our continuous integration went okay the next step would be going towards a release so here we have our three environments if we're going to check the details on that one so we're going to edit the release definition of the common network 
again we had continuous integration in the previous part here we have continuous deployment so everything every time an artifact is created from our build we're going to trigger a deployment as we can see here with our triggers deployment uh, development will be automated uh, deployment after release creation test will be done after successful deployment on development production after successful deployment on test if we go and look towards the environment as such we go towards the deployment conditions so where we saw okay production will be done after test we can also say with approvals prior to deployment we need approval from a given user I'm going to do that for now all the every environment will be deployed by the same method the only difference will be the research group where we're going to deploy it and the parameter file and those we have configured as environment specific variables so the parameter file is here for production and the resource group of production and if we would go look towards the history this is not the, the one I was looking for if we go into one of the releases if I would open the last release see that every environment was done okay and we see that the steps we just saw that they will, will run through so we need development test production so how does it look in reality so we have our parameter file from development test and production let's say we don't want five but we want ten subnets for each environment we're going to save all those going towards the versioning software I'm going to check ok it's going to detect that several files were changed so we're going to say ok we're going to commit those get those to our commit we see that we went from 5 to 10 for each of the files so update towards 10 subnets instead of 5 we're going to commit it so now we're doing a code check-in this will trigger the continuous integration so we're going to have a build, we're going to test it after the test we're going to add an artifact and that will trigger the continuous deployment and we're going to run through each environment so let's check in terms of our build so we're going to back towards our <coughs> build and here we see okay there's a new release that's been new build actually sorry a new build that has been triggered that's being tested for the moment by one of our build agents so it's going to do the validation of the co of the scripts the templates and so on and it's going to do a test deployment of those so it's been running for about 45 seconds now going to wait a bit for the console output ok we see that all the tests completed if I would go back to see the details of that one so we can see that it's continuing here to do what needs to be done so we, if we look towards our log file we can see the template validation went ok the deployment was ok so everything was fine we did two 12 tests and they all passed which is great and so now we'll notice that the release has that the new release has been created so we were at 6 there's release 7 it was auto created because of the artifact and it's currently being deployed in development so if we're going to check in development we 
going to see that changes will be made and it's actually rebuilding for the moment the reason if we're going to look towards the template as such in the details okay deploy oh. not uh, towards the template but in terms of the way we're doing the release there are two ways you can do the release of a e resource where you can say okay deployment mode validation audits so or testing incremental mode where you say okay we're going if there is a difference we're going to add the complete mode is where you say okay the new template is the truth so if things are have been deleted delete those two it's been set in the complete mode what you can see is that several subnets were being recreated if it given deployment was in there it's just going to update those and leave it alone when going back towards our dashboard we'll see that in our view the tests were done they're all okay in terms of the deployment status okay it's running still running and it's going to do that across everything so here we can see towards the environment development is on release 7 test on release 6 and it will continue forward I hope you enjoyed this demo this is a bit an introduction into infrastructure as code and to give you an idea of what it might bring to you the power of our Azure resource manager also and yeah this is Visual Studio Online Visual Studio Team Services how it can help you in that. Thanks for watching.